Okay, in a world of ones and zeros, are you a zero or the one? Mobius and the Matrix has got nothing to do with what we're talking about. I just like the quote. Anyway, enlightenment comes to demographics, or put simply, everything you needed to know about Warren Thompson's 1919 demographic transition model. Here we have the model with stage one illuminated, stage two, stage three, and stage four. As he drew it, only four stages notice. On the north axis, for going on the x-axis, going from north upwards, we have crude birth rate or crude death rate. That's the number of births or deaths per thousand of the population per annum. Bear in mind the death rate is hiding within it key other rates, such as the infant mortality rate. That's the number of deaths per thousand of the population uh, in their first year, and child mortality in the first five years, of course. Infant mortality and child mortality good indicators of the level of development of a country. The birth rate, of course, also can be measured using something like the total fertility rate. And the total fertility rate is the number of children that on average will be born to each woman in a society. We'll come on to that in a moment. Okay, so those are the four different stages. Stage one, birth rate and death rate are high. So if you go back in history, we're talking about black out of the one, do, 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 Brian Blessed as the king, and uh, Prince Edmund, and we're talking about medieval times. So we have all kinds of things hitting the death rate. We have high levels of communicable disease, such as the plague. We've got very low levels of freshwater access. We've got low levels of food access. We've got all kinds of problems to do with people living very close to each other, and you've, you've got um, fires sweeping through, etc. So good old four portion of the apocalypse, fire, pestilence, war, disease, and another one. Uh, the birth rate, of course, often reflects the death rate, that with a high level of infant mortality and no national health service, if you want to be looked after in your older age, your frail dotage, which may only have been about 30, then you better have children surviving. So you had more children, nice and straightforward. We'll talk about the um, different places where these models apply uh, in, in a moment. Stay, sorry, at this stage, of course, the total population remains low and doesn't kind of change much because Death rates are wiping out those births that are coming in, and you can see the area underneath the natural increase is relatively small. It would also be cyclical. You'd have a year of plague, and then that might be followed by a period of no plague, where, you, where the population would expand, and then suddenly back comes the plague and pestilence, and out goes your surplus population. <clears throat> stage two. So stage two, much, much more straightforward idea here. We've got the death rate coming down. Now, I have a problem with this because the death rate does not come down because of inventions and wholesale inventions in fantastic medical health care. Yes, there would be basic ideas such as disinfection and sterilization, but the most important thing to get the death rate down is to improve nutrition. Uh, and that happened, of course, because of things like Jethro Tull's seed drill, Brackets. He didn't invent it. He stole it from the Chinese who made it 500 years earlier. But things such as the Jethro Tull seed drill and the putting of oxen to plough meant that we could improve food yields at the same time as transport infrastructure meant that we could get food to people, which meant there was very little in the way of malnutrition, a lot less undernutrition, with the result that pregnant women were producing much healthier children. Hence, the death rate began to come down. Then you got increased access to clean water. You got innovations in supplying um, clean water to places, innovations in terms of, as I said, sterilizations, disinfectants, meaning that people could begin to survive infections as they might not have done in Blackout or One, the medieval time. Birth rate, of course, stays high because of cultural inertia. People got used to the, um, seeing large levels of infant mortality, and therefore they were not prepared straight away to believe that things were going to be any different. If you got used to a plague wiping out people in your village, and it just so happened for 10 years those children wiped more, weren't wiped out, at what point do you make the brave decision that this is something new and drastic that has changed forever? This, of course, is, is also hampered by religion, because many religious practices gluing society together were trying to maintain high birth rates as well. After a period of time, good old cultural inertia gave way and people realised that the death rate had come down now and all of those increases in food availability and medical health care, now we get into vaccination, now we get into penicillin, all of those things. All of these things were responded to by the population who reduced their birth rate because, of course, they spotted whoa, local overpopulation where the local food yields were beginning to be stressed by this growing population. Once the birth rate started coming down, they came down very rapidly. And at this stage, when you go from stage three to stage four, you've got social change. 
women are beginning to be recognised in their workplace, roles are changing, the law is being enshrined to support women's role in the workplace, and you get the social change which helps to finally nail the coffin of cultural inertia, so to speak, no demographic pun intended, with the result that you will end up getting stage four, the low stationary stage. And in stage four, you've got birth rates and death rates almost equal, with the result the population growth is negligible. Stage five then, after Thompson, and you can't really consider it part of his original model, what's happened since, well, of course, this emancipation of women and, and careers and the cost of children, our ability to control fertility, all of these things have meant that now birth rates very often are below 2.11. That's the replacement ratio. The replacement ratio is the number of children needed to be born into a developed world society to maintain a stable society. Result, declining population in stage five. Thompson couldn't have predicted it. We only now know it sweeping across the world. Interestingly, we've got now over 50% of the world's countries have got a birth rate lower than the death rate. However, they don't make up 50% of the world's population. Uh -huh. Statistics, statistics, and more statistics. OK, under the graph, you can pause me. I've moved me so you can pause me along. And you can see I've added in from whichever graphic I stole it from the detail. Thank you very much. Who's, who did the graphic? Nice though it is. And you can see some of the things I've talked about, including food. There, pause me, have a look at it, go backwards um, and see what you think. Your textbook, of course, is standard on this, um, and we will be criticizing the model later on. But for now, let's see if we can apply that model. To what extent can we actually apply the model? And we'll look at uh, the UK and China. Uh, here's an example of the UK. Well, hold on, that's just the model, and I can't find where to put me. Let's put me there. That's just an example of the model, and then you've got the UK dates. So there you go, UK pre-1760. You can read for yourselves, industrial revolution, innovations, bringing the death rate down, getting food supply going, increasing transport infrastructure, great people uh, such as Brunel, uh, getting our transport, allowing us to move crops around, really bringing down the relative cost of crops. And then you get into the mature industrial revolution and into the first half of the 20th century. And by now the birth rate's coming down. We begin to get the, the, the spreading of family planning ideas. And then finally post 1940 and onwards. A little bit more complex, of course, would be to have a look at this one. This is from the book by Prosser and Prosser. And I recommend it to you. Uh, you can have a search on Google for it. You won't quite stage it. We'll find it. And this is actually the UK's death rate and the UK's birth rate. And you can see how they changed over time. I could pause it and you can look for key significant events. Notice the period of cheap gin drinking, when uh, early urbanization processes uh, and the importing of Uneva from uh, Holland led to a spike in death rates. Notice that birth rates go up in the background as a spike to death rates, common feature. Death rates come down, we get things like vox, uh, vaccination by Jenner. 1848 Public Health Act, the first where the local authority was responsible for the public health of people. So clean um, water, getting poo off the streets, all of those things, sanitation, and those things carry on. So this legislation is demonstrating how society is taking a key role in driving um, demographic change right up until 1911, of course, in the beginnings of the welfare state as we know it. Up here, the birth rate stayed high, good old cultural inertia. Then we started banning children from factories. Damn you, children, get into the schools. Suddenly, children stopped being an economic asset and started, started being a liability. And that, along with compulsory registrations, began to bring down the birth rate. Birth rate really took a hammering when uh, Reverend Bradlaw, 1876, started the first ever large-scale birth control propaganda. And you can see the cliff, the birth rates dropped off. And then, of course, you've got the local uh, instances, such as the World Wars. If the UK is one way of looking at it, China is much more interesting. So here is um, uh, uh, a resource taken from Ward, David Ward's book, The Integrated Approach. And you can see he's divided up China, demographic history of China into stages A, B, C, D, and E. A lot of notes coming up, which I'm not going to read out to you. But the interesting thing to do is to have a look at these stages. So the birth rate is in orange, the death rate is in blue, and the total population is in purple. OK, let's have a look at stage by stage. Here's stage A. Does that kind of look familiar to you, to paraphrase uh, Al Gore? Death rates coming down, birth rates coming down. Now that clearly was looking like the beginnings of demographic change. And if you have a look at the little note you've got here, which I'd advise you to do in your own time, you can see the reasons why, in fact, um, China post Second World War wanted a big country. It had Russia to the north and wanted to make sure that it had a large population to give a strong nation. So what happened in stage B? Well, stage B is one of the most catastrophic periods in human history of almost any country. The Great Leap Forward. Now, in this case, 
a great leap, well, not so sure, because what led to this massive spike in the death rate? Well, that led, or well, that was a, um, a result of the drive for industrialization. China realized that it had to industrialize like the West, the Cold War, 58 is just kicking off. Industrialization is the key. Industry means factories, and factories mean cities, and cities need people working in factories. Take them off the, the rural areas, get them making stuff, and industry will thrive. The problem was they left the reorganization of agriculture to uh, Sikorsky, and Sikorsky they got in from Russia, and unfortunately it wasn't the same environment, it wasn't the same crop with the result that with some stress, particularly water stress in many areas, massive famine occurred. And that's what's shown here in this great peak in the death rate. So kind of a human-induced famine of the Great Leap Forward, one of the most ironically named periods of history, if you ask me. Everything's written down in there. You can read it to yourself. Pause. Ding! Moving on. What happens when your death rate goes up? Well, what we saw before in the UK. When death rates go up, people respond because they see those people dying, and the birth rate shot up. But notice it shot up to being about 40% higher than it was before the, the birth rate had started coming down. An amazing fact. And the big problem for China and Chinese growing population comes from this demographic response of the birth rate. Notice the settling of the population during that period of the Great Leap Forward, and then the rocket ship. Again, the green represents, or teal, sorry, represents natural increase. So in stage C, we had the 1960s. And unfortunately, just when the Chinese needed to get their birth rate down, they had the Cultural Revolution. And in the Cultural Revolution, everything Western was eschewed because the idea of industrialization was linked to the Great Famine. And therefore, anything Western was seen as wrong. 1960s, Cold War, read all about it somewhere else, but not here. So from the 1960s up to 1970, anything Western such as birth control was not welcomed. Unfortunately, during that period, China's population rocketed. Get to stage D, and they began to try to get the birth rate down. And the way they did it was not with a one-child policy. Please don't walk away from this video thinking it was a one-child policy. They started gradually, firstly with public information. Apologies if you can pronounce these words. The one say shall, later longer fewer. Just a policy to get people to think about putting off later marriage longer gaps between children and fewer children. Gradually over time through to 1979 this didn't work and you can read for yourself that this ended up forming its way into what has been commonly known as the one child policy. A mixture of stick and stick was used to try to get the Chinese population to look after their fertility. In a country where a totalitarian party can control everything one of the easiest ways to do it was to set the age and raise the age of marriage. Of course, the problem with this, lots and lots of stories you can read in much better text than Moore's note here for yourself, but there were stories of infanticide, especially in rural areas, if the firstborn was a girl. There were issues to do with uh, uh, accusation of, of manipulating the gene pool, and in manipulating the gene pool, was this a deliberate attempt to make sure the Han Chinese were the only ethnic group? So ethnic policies. I'd suggest you read all, any good geophile or geofactory or your textbooks on this period. Very good indeed. I just leave you one simple thought after stage E, which is pretty much bringing us up to date now. And you'll find, and you can read this if you like, but I'd get a more up-to-date source um, from uh, the internet or from your textbook. And this is basically how they've had to tinker and play with the one-child policy as it is now, because you know there are problems of uh, a, a very, very unstable population pyramid. One child only, remember the replacement ratio is 2.11. You've got a very, very unstable population pyramid where your number of people coming to the workforce to make up and to pay taxes is very low. The replacement ratio low means that the dependency ratio is very high. You read all about it somewhere else. I'm just giving you a quick snapshot. However, let's go back. Have a look at stage A again. Does that remind you of anything? Yeah, it looks exactly like stage two, the DTM. There it is. So in that case, at what point would China's population have leveled out and got into stage four? Probably about 1964, perhaps? Well, if it got into it by 1964, it would have missed out all of this growth period of its population. So if you slide them together, there you go. Wonder what China's population would be now. Right, that's about it for me. I just thought you should have a look around the demographic transition. I've got another video which I'm going to make about the criticisms of the DTM, but for now, I hope that does something. Remember, these are the basics, highlighting what you should go back to your notes and make sure you get detail on.